for the regime of Saddam Hussein, this was darkness at noon. Behind a statue of the man they called the great uncle, a building burned. This was the Iraqi Olympic Committee headquarters, an organization run by Saddam's son, Uday. Perhaps the only Olympic building with a prison in the basement. The flames were carbonizing a hated symbol of the dictator and his family. In this carnival of liberty, the first form of celebration was economic. This massive and anarchic transfer of resources, that's looting to you and me, was defended by almost everybody in the same terms. For 30 years, they said, Saddam Hussein had been looting them. Some took time out to express a violent view of their former leader. Put Saddam, no Saddam! Even in defeat, his face dominated his people, and his legacy dominated their thoughts. Saddam Hussein killed my family, killed my three uncles, and my cousin, and my son uncle. He is murdering, he is killer. Must you are save me from him. The new masters of Baghdad pushed quickly into parts of the city they had not secured. The welcome they received was one of gratitude. Thank you, people from. The Americans pushed on, approaching the Palestine Hotel, where journalists covering the war in Baghdad were launched. Crowds surged into the streets to applaud them and their work. As the afternoon ended, a crowd gathered at the foot of the last great Saddam statue to be erected, last April, on the occasion of his 65th birthday. Their intent was clear, but their means were meager. Once again, the Americans came to the rescue. An armored vehicle equipped with crane and chains took center stage. Within half an hour, all was ready for the symbolic execution. As the crowd danced and cheered, the statue of the man who had dominated their lives for the past 35 years toppled. The chains that brought this image down were as nothing to the chains that had bound a people for so long. This for them was the key moment of the day, the key moment of the war, for many indeed, the cardinal moment of their lives.